Good morning. My name is Wes Anderson, and I serve as the Youth and Family Director at Robertsdale United Methodist Church. Um, and I will be sharing a word with you this morning. Uh, as some of you may know, uh, our pastor, Reverend Jonathan Hart, uh, his father is in critical condition, and um, so he is with family, and uh, he wanted me to pass along his thanks um, for all of the prayers um, and the support that his family has received. And uh, certainly as we gather this morning, even virtually as a church, our thoughts and our prayers are with Pastor Jonathan, um, with his family. Um, and in fact, let's start our time of worship this morning before we go any further um, by going to our Heavenly Father in prayer, if you'll join me. Father God, um, right now we just lift up our pastor and uh, his family to you, Lord. Um, God, we just ask that your comforter be with them, uh, that you would provide peace, Lord. Um, Lord, selfishly, um, we want only good things for those that we care about, God. Um, we can't imagine uh, what so many people across our nation are going through, uh, experiencing hardship and hurt in the time um, of social distancing. So, Lord, please um, con continue to be with our pastor and his family. Um, Lord, we just pray that your presence would be real with them. Um, and for everybody across uh, our county, in our state, in our, in our nation, God, who are experiencing hardship, who are feeling alone, um, who are dealing with, with tough things uh, during this time, we just pray that they would experience your peace also, your healing also. Um, God, we thank you for uh, our pastor and what he means to us, Lord. Um, we thank you that even in this time that we can count on you, that we can rely on you, that we can come to you with our hurts and our needs, Lord. Um, and God, as we, as we turn to your word for encouragement over the next few moments, we just ask that you be with us, that you guide us, that you strengthen us, um, and that you hold us close to you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Uh, so this is my first time doing this with you guys. I think today is like March the 62nd, something like that. Uh, it's a, a crazy time, a lot going on right now. Um, I am excited to share a word with you this morning, even despite circumstances, uh, because I do believe that God has given me something that's pertinent to our lives. Uh, if the video quality is not very good, I apologize. I'm sitting in our youth room. I'm holding my iPhone, and uh, I'm just doing the best that I can, so I sure hope that you guys can um, hear me, that you can follow along. The passage that I'll be sharing from this morning comes from uh, John chapter 11, and it's the story of Lazarus. Uh, this is, of course, the startling miracle in which Jesus calls the dead man out of the tomb and he's raised to life again. Uh, this morning, however, I'd like to focus on a different, smaller miracle that's found within this story. And it's a miracle that's applicable for us today. Um, and that's the response of Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, to Jesus, even in a time of overwhelming grief. Uh, let me read uh, from John chapter 11. This is verses 1 through 7, and this is what it says. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days and then said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. This is kind of an odd response from Jesus. Here he has Mary and, and Martha and Lazarus, some very close and dear friends, people that he cares about immensely. And, and Mary and Martha are at their wits end because Lazarus, Lazarus is on his deathbed and so they send word to Jesus. They've, they've tried doctors. They've tried uh, prayers. They've tried uh, ointments. They've done everything that they possibly can, and he's not getting any better. And so they send word to Jesus as, as their last Hail Mary because they know that Jesus can fix things. And when Jesus receives word that his friend Lazarus is sick and is dying and that Mary and Martha are requesting that he come, his response is, to stay where he is for a couple more days. It's a confusing response. 
It's an odd response. You would think that Jesus would drop everything that he was doing, that he would run to be at the side of Lazarus, that he would uh, heal him, that he would intervene, that he would fix things, and yet he doesn't. He stays where he is. And Lazarus dies. Imagine when Mary and Martha are sitting at the bedside of a dying Lazarus and the messenger that they sent to retrieve Jesus returns and they, they have excitement and anticipation and they say, is he coming? Is he on his way? Is he almost here? And the messenger says, well, he's, he's not coming. He said he'll be here in a few days. Imagine how they must have felt. And then Lazarus passed away. I want to skip ahead a little bit and read from John 11 verses 17 through 29. This is what it says. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. So he was dead and buried, had been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said. And he's asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and she went to him. Church, the truth is that sometimes we allow our circumstances to dictate our proximity to Jesus. Sometimes we allow our circumstances to dictate our proximity to Jesus. Certainly during this time, that's a truth that's applicable to our lives in this time of isolation, in this time of sickness, in this time of, of loss and grief, in this time where some folks are struggling financially, where people have lost jobs, where we're unable to gather with our church, with our family, with our friends, where we're, we're struggling uh, with routine. A lot of times in our lives when we're dealing with hurts and pains, when things happen to injure us that aren't our fault, when we make a mess of our lives, our response is to retreat from God, to hide from God, to, to put distance between us and Him, to be angry and to blame Him, to, to think that we're not good enough and that we, do, we don't deserve a relationship with God. For whatever reason, our response a lot of times to circumstances that are poor is to put distance between us and God. Sometimes we allow our circumstances to dictate our proximity to Jesus. But in Mary and Martha, in John chapter 11, we see something wholly different. Here, we see that instead, they bring their hurt to Jesus. They take steps toward Jesus, despite the circumstances, despite how they feel. Even Martha, when she approaches Jesus, she said, Lord, if you had been here, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. I imagine that Martha and Mary had some anger towards Jesus, and maybe even rightfully so. I imagine that they were disappointed in Him. I imagine that they were in the middle of grief. I imagine that there was a lot of uncertainty for them about what their, their days and their life and their future would hold. And yet, they took all of that to the feet of Jesus. Jesus. Every bit of hurt and pain and anger and doubt and fear. Uh, Mar Martha running towards Jesus, running out to meet him. And then Mary, after collecting herself, after staying back for a while, she also joins her sister 
and they move towards Jesus. Church, I want to share with you this morning three reasons that it is crucial that we keep moving towards Jesus no matter the circumstances, no matter how we feel, no matter what's going on in our lives. The first reason it's crucial that we keep moving towards Jesus no matter the circumstances is because He's big enough for our doubts and our fears and our hurts and our hang-ups and our baggage. God is big enough to handle your doubts. He's big enough to handle your anger with Him, your fear, your disappointment, your baggage. He can be trusted. He created you. He loves you. You can trust Him with all that you are and with all that you've done and with all that you've been through and experienced. He's big enough. The second reason it's important for us to keep moving towards Jesus no matter what is because He cares for us. In John 11.35, we see that Jesus wept. It's the shortest, but also one of the most impactful verses in Scripture. Jesus, who knows that He's going to raise Lazarus from the dead, who knows that Lazarus is not in that tomb forever, He still breaks down and He still weeps. Why? Because He cares. Because He cares about Mary and Martha and the pain that they're experiencing and the hurt that they've been through. And, and because he, he cares uh, about His friend Lazarus being placed in grave clothes and put in the tomb. And He cares about everyone having to experience the hurt of losing someone that they care about. He wept. Jesus cares for us. Our Lord is one who knows what it is to hurt. He loves us so much, in fact, He cares for us so much, in fact, that He did not see heaven and equality with God as something to be held on to, but He willingly chose to give that up and to come to earth to experience all the same hurts and all the same uh, things that we experience, the pain that we go through, to experience it all and to die on a cross and, and to raise again for us so that we can experience freedom. Our God is one who cares for us. The third reason that it's important that we keep moving towards Jesus no matter what is because healing is found at the feet of Jesus. Healing is found at the feet of Jesus. Excuse that noise. The truth is, church, that our faith does not negate pain. But even in the midst of our pain, God is present and He is good. For Mary and Martha, healing did not begin when Lazarus walked out of the tomb but healing began when they made the decision, even in the midst of immense brokenness, to move towards Jesus. And the same is true for us. Our circumstance, our pain, our hurt, it may not be taken away. It may not be resolved. It may not work out in the way that we hope. But even in the middle of our pain and our brokenness and our hurt, we can trust that God is good and we can make the healing decision to move towards Him with that brokenness, with that hurt, to take it all to the feet of Jesus because that's where healing is found. We often think that our position and our posture towards God is static. We, we think that we remain in one place and God comes and goes as we experience Him, but church, this isn't so. Scripture testifies to and instructs us that God is on the move and that He's always up to something. It's up to us to keep up. Church, if we want to remain in close proximity to Jesus, if we want to be a part of His redemptive work of making all things new, we must take steps toward Him no matter our circumstances. I had a basketball coach in high school. And uh, he was a great coach. He demanded a lot of us. And one thing that he always told us was, you're always either becoming a better basketball player or a worse basketball player. You're never staying in the same spot. So on Thanksgiving, if you stuff yourself with turkey and you sit on the couch all day, you are becoming a worse basketball player. However, if you're waking up even during breaks from school and you're running, you're working on dribbling drills, you're taking jump shots, you're becoming a better basketball player. And the same is true with our, our proximity to Jesus. Every day we're growing closer to Jesus, closer to God, or further away. Whatever our circumstances are, it's up to us to take steps towards Jesus to grow, 
to receive the healing that we need. I've been married for almost seven years, and I can honestly say that I know very little about marriage. Um, I try very hard, uh, but I know very little about marriage. One thing that, that I do know and that I have discovered about marriage is that you don't always feel it. You don't always feel the love. Uh, there are days when you are disconnected. There are days when you are not on the same page. There are days when you feel distant from each other, when you don't get along, when you don't see eye to eye. There's, there's days when you don't feel it. I think it's no mistake that Scripture compares our relationship with God to marriage. Because the truth is that in my marriage, uh, my feelings can be fleeting. But my decision to love my wife and to commit myself to her and her alone is not fleeting. Uh, it's a decision that I make anew and that I re-up every morning when my eyes open and when my feet hit the floor. And as Christians, this is the type of relationship that, that we are to have with God. The truth is we aren't always going to feel close to God. We aren't always going to be pleased with God. We aren't always going to see uh, His active hand in our life. But even in those moments, if we commit ourselves to Him, if every day we decide that our allegiance is to Him, that we trust in His plan, that He is the Lord of our life, that we're going to trust Him with all that we are, God's Word says that He will bring good things from our life, that He will make us a new creation, that He will give us healing, maybe not in our timeline, maybe not in a way that we would have chosen, but that He will be with us, that He will never leave us, that He will love us, and that He will bring good things out of our hurt. That He will make us into the us that we were created to be. So church, I have a couple of questions for you this morning. Is there any hurt or baggage or pain or struggle that you're not trusting God with? Bring it to the feet of Jesus this morning. This morning, do you realize that God cares for you? Do you realize that He made you with a purpose? Do you realize that He knows you? That He loves you? That He's not worried about all the mistakes that you've made or the things that you've messed up or the baggage that you carry? That none of that keeps Him from calling you His own? Do you realize that He cares for you? And this morning, do you need healing? Is there something going on in your life, and your family? Gosh, there is for almost everybody right now. If you need healing, healing is found at the feet of Jesus. Healing is not found when your circumstance is resolved in the way that you wish it for. Healing is found when you decide to take your brokenness and to move towards Jesus, to trust God with it, to bring it to His feet. And to say, God, this is all I am. This is all I have. It's not much. I'm struggling. I'm struggling to believe. I'm struggling to, to trust you. I'm angry. I'm hurt. I'm disappointed. But this is what I've got. And that moment, that's where healing begins. You have a God that is big enough for your doubts and your fears and your hurts and your hang-ups and your baggage. You have a God that cares for you. And you have a God that offers healing. Let's pray. Lord, it's amazing that even in a time of, of pandemic and isolation, that nothing can keep us from being together. That even if we're not physically in the same place, Lord, we, we join together in spirit to say that we trust you and that you're good. God, this morning, I just pray for anybody watching this, whether it's on Facebook Live, whether it's later on our website, God, whether it's YouTube, however anyone is seeing this, that, Lord, for everyone watching, that, that they would take steps closer to you today. That no matter the circumstance, no matter the doubt, no matter what's going on in their lives, that they would make concerted effort to move closer to you, Lord. God, I, I pray that you would begin a work of healing in us. That you would stir up something new in us, God. That when we are able to gather together again, that we wouldn't just celebrate that we're together, Lord, but that we would be changed people. That we would be people who have been made new. 
people who have rededicated ourselves to you, God. Lord, be with all of our church family. Help them to trust in you today. Help them to rely on you today. And God, I just pray a special prayer of blessing over every single person watching this video and ask that you would just make yourself real to them today. That something would happen in, in, the, in the circumstances of their day. They would let them know that you're there and that you care. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Well, church, I've enjoyed being with you this morning. Uh, if you recognize this backdrop, it is our youth room at church. Um, Pastor Jonathan has been doing his Bible studies on Wednesday nights from up here. Uh, it is a place that I love to be very much. Um, if you would like, you're welcome to share this video. Um, please click the like, click the, the love button. I think that uh, helps with Facebook's algorithms and uh, getting this message out to others. Um, we want you to know that we're here for you, that we love you as a church. If there's any way that we can serve you this week, please don't hesitate to send our, our church Facebook page a message. Um, let us know how we can better serve you and uh, how we can meet the needs of our community. And uh, church members, if uh, you would like to give your tithe this month, you may do that on our website. Uh, we have it all set up. Charcy and I uh, did ours yesterday. Um, it takes a couple minutes. It's not hard. And uh, that's a way for us to continue to meet the needs of, of our community. Um, so hope you have a wonderful week, wonderful day. Um, continue to pray for our pastor and his family. And uh, above all else, know that God loves you and that we love you. Thanks, church. Bye.